welcome back to Alive Kids. We're so glad that you're able to join us today. I have a couple of announcements that I wanted to make you aware of. One, we're meeting in person on Wednesday nights. We'd love to see you. So if you are in first grade all the way up to fifth grade, come and join us. There's no need to register, just show up. You're gonna have a great time, get to be with your friends and learn about Jesus. Also, Sunday mornings are still available. We have children's ministries at 9 a.m. and at 11 on 11 a.m. We wanna see you there. Again, we do need to wear masks, so just be prepared to come with your mask and to come and worship Jesus. So right now, let's stand up, let's pray, and let's begin our service. Father, we ask that you would be with us today, that you would help us to hear the message that you have for us. We pray that we would be changed into your image, that we go from glory to glory. Help us to see and hear you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go worship. Come on. Come on now.
there, there, Captain Flint. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. Hello and ahoy! Welcome to our Alive Kids series, Choosing Your Own Adventure. You know, Captain Flint's been a little sad lately because, well, here, this is the last week for our Choose Your Own Adventure series. So he's a little upset. Rah! Walk the blank! Walk the blank! Whoa, Captain Flint! Whoa, let's not go that way. You know, I got an idea. Let's play a pirate game that'll cheer you up. So this game is going to be Choose Your Favorites. You know how us pirates, we'll be loving our treasure. So I'm going to give you two choices, and you got to choose which you would value the most. Let's start. So the first one would be, which would you value the most? Your very own pirate hat or your very own pirate sword. Har, har. I know this is pretty cool, isn't it? I think for myself, I'd probably have to choose me pirate sword. While I'd probably be last without me captain's hat, I knew I'd, my protection is important to have me sword with me at all times. Which would you be choosing? All right, so let's move on to the next one, shall we? Which would ye be valuing more? Your own bed to put your head on, or ye very pirate boots, or I suppose in your case be your shoes as you call it. Well, as a pirate, we don't be caring as much about where we lay our heads, you see, out on the sea. We've been sleeping on rocks and sand and all kinds of things. So I think for myself, I prefer me pirate shoes. I can't imagine running around with me bare feet all around. All right, let's do one more. Hmm. What do you think, Captain Flint? Uh, find the treasure! Find the treasure! Ooh, that's a good one it'd be. So, would you rather be valuing your pirate treasure that you hid in all your gold, or be valuing the most important treasure of all, which is being healed of all your dastardly deeds from your very own Jesus Christ on that cross X plank of his. I think that's an easy choice even for me being a pirate there. Because we know God is the greatest treasure of them all. Rah! Big idea! Big idea! Alright, Captain Flint, hold on. I'm getting to that. Alright. It's time for our very last big idea from our Choosing Your Adventure series. Alright, let's see what we got here. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Captain Flint, my treasure's gone. The big idea is gone. Uh, uh, what do we do? Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. You know, the Bible be saying we hide the word in our hearts, and we've been doing that this week. I think I have the big idea here right in me noggin here, and right here in me heart. So everybody point to your heart and say the big idea when it comes up. I can be wise by choosing God. Yes, choosing God be the greatest treasure of them all. All right, let's get into this final video of a series and let's set sail and I see ye mateys another time. Well, I love a good story. How about you? If you're reading a really good story, it will take you somewhere in your mind. You can really begin to imagine the scenery and what the characters may be wearing and what, what they look like. I just, I just love reading a really good story. Well, did you know that Jesus often told stories? And we call them parables. So today for our Bible story, I'm going to tell you a story that comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 and 45. Just really two small verses out of this chapter, but it's such a powerful story. So I thought it'd be good to tell it in the form of a choose your own adventure. So you guys at home, think about it as I'm telling the story and see what you would choose. Maybe it might be different than what I would choose. So here's our story. 
So imagine that you're in Israel a really long time ago. We've talked about that, Mr. Isaiah, Miss Patty, over time. They've had you imagine what it would have been like to live when Jesus walked on earth. Well, I want you to go back there in your mind. Go back to what that may have looked like with, you know, dirt, ground, and you were walking everywhere barefoot, and, you know, not all the traffic, no cars, no video games, and you're really just creating your own fun through your imagination. Well, imagine that you're living during this time and you want to go to a friend's house. So you go, you decide that you're gonna walk to this friend's house and he's all the way on the other side of the village. So do you, here's your choices, do you choose to take the main road or do you choose to take a small path through a neighbor's field? Main road or small path through a neighbor's field? Well, let's say you choose to take the shortcut. You're gonna go through this neighbor's field because it's such a beautiful day and the sun's out and it's the wind's kind of cool. It's not like 90 degrees. Let's say it's about 75 degrees and it's just really nice day. And so you're gonna take this small path through a field that's gonna give you a shortcut. So you go through and you hear water flowing by a stream. Do you stop to get a drink of water or do you run down the path because it's such a great day and you just wanna run out in the field? Well, let's say you stop to get a drink of water from the stream that you're running through, that you hear running by. So you walk over to the stream, you bend down and you get a drink of water. And then as you realize that you're getting that drink of water, you see something unique sticking up through the ground. It's got a little, it's got a dirt on it. It's a little bit, not very much of it showing. And it's just, it's right there. So do you just leave it? Or do you decide that you're gonna dig the top of the dirt off to see what might be underneath? Well, me being a curious person, I would see if I could dig it out to see what it might be. So you're very curious, you dig around the object until you can tell that it's a wooden box. Okay, now we're really curious, right? There's this wooden box and it's not like brand new. This is like an old wooden box and it's been buried there for a long time. Well, you slowly open the box and inside you find a treasure, more amazing, more wonderful, more valuable than anything you've ever owned or anything you've ever seen before. Okay, now we really have to decide, do we keep it or do we bury it? Well, you decide that you're going to bury it and then you're going to go and ask the, um, the guy that owns the field if you can buy his field. Hmm. So you run to the owner of the field and you say, I want to buy your field. What would it take? And the owner of the field, obviously being an adult and you being a kid, he asks for way much more money than you ever, ever have. Do you give up in frustration or do you sell everything that you own and your mom or dad may give you, you sell it all so that you can buy the field. Well, you decide that the treasure is so special that you're going to do whatever you can to buy this field. So you sell everything you own so that you can go and um, buy this field and own this treasure. So I know in this story, we got to make choices um, as to how the story was gonna go. We got to decide whether we were gonna cut through town or go through town on the main road or the small path, or we got to stop and get a drink of water or keep going. Those were all decisions that we made as we were telling the story. And as kids, most oftentimes, we don't get to make all those decisions on our own. We, a lot of times those choices are made for us. We have to eat what's put before us at dinner time, or we don't get to choose how late we can stay up or you know where we get to go at every moment of the day. Our parents, and many times the people around us make those choices for us. But just like the person in this story who was willing to give up everything they owned for this treasure, 
God is that treasure for us. And you don't have to have somebody else make that choice for you. You get to make the choice of choosing God on your own. And that's the choice that, again, nobody can make for you. In, in this scripture, the parable is telling us, or asking us really, are we willing to make the decision to, to do anything we can do to choose God? He is the greatest, greatest treasure you will ever receive. He should be worth more than anything that you own. And your choice should be willing, or you should choose Him over anything else in your life. And again, that's a choice that only you can make. What happened to my prize petunias? It's weird that we haven't seen Zoe yet. Because she didn't take the shortcut. This whole thing is supposed to be fun. Now all I care about is beating Jeff. I typed exactly what the logbook said. Maybe we should go back and check? All right, this better be worth it. Hey Zoe, where were you? I have a confession. So I wrote the wrong, recorded it to the logbook so you would get lost. Good thing I ran into you. Let's go back. I thought you were really sorry, but you just wanted to use me to win. There you are. We found it. Great work, Jeff. How'd you get here so fast? I saw Zoe. It's a long story. Let's hurry up. We're so close to the end. Do you want to navigate again? No. That's okay. Actually, I need to go. Go? Go where? I gotta catch up with Zoe. Why? We have the last coordinates. She'll just slow us down. I was wrong about her and you. Me and Zoe think geocaching is fun. And this challenge is important to her. So if that makes you think I'm a nerd, I really don't care. Zoe, wait! What now? Listen, Zoe, you've been right about everything. I've been terrible to you all day. You're more important to me than winning the challenge. Oh, really? Yes, really. How about this? I'll help you find the last cash and you get to keep the prize. Really? Yes, really. You did all the work anyways. Hmm. Please don't say really again. All right, fine. Only because we're the best team. Yes. But I'm still going to be the navigator. I wonder what Jeff's problem was. For the record, I always knew he was a loser. Interesting. Looks like we're almost heading back to where we started. Look out! Jeff! What in the world are you doing? Shh! We almost ran into Petunia Guy. P Petunia Guy? What in the world are you talking about? I accidentally ruined his flowers and he got really mad. But Jeff, the GPS says the cash is straight ahead. <sighs> I guess I should apologize to him anyway. Oh, hey, good afternoon. What are, what are you two doing here? Uh, hello again, sir. Remember how I destroyed your flowers? Yes, that does ring a bell. <laughs> yeah, and I said it was because some kids pranked us. I, I lied. It was me. We were, we were doing a geocaching challenge, and I climbed over the fence, but I fell, and I destroyed your flowers. I see. So that's what happened? Yeah, it was after I left you. She, she's not a part of it, so... Wait a minute. You, you were all alone, young lady, in the woods? Well, kind of. Oh, that doesn't sound very safe. I didn't even think of that. Wow, I made so many bad choices today. Listen, don't be so hard on yourself. We all make bad choices now and again. And uh, listen, don't worry about the flowers either. As a matter of fact, I owe you an apology too. Why? Well, I was kind of upset, but I should have had more of a Christ-like attitude. What does that mean? Well, it means I, I should have been nicer and more patient with you, the way Jesus would have been. What are they doing? Not right about Jesus in the Bible, hey, right? I think the last two things are over here. Shh. Fine. I'll win this myself. I remember some stories about Jesus. He's the son of God or something? Oh, yeah, I remember. He died on the cross for our sins. Well, that's right. 
And if we believe that he died for us, well then our sins will be forgiven. You know, this whole day I've had to make a choice between good and one thing or the other, but all my choices turn out to be bad. And I still feel bad for trying to get back at you guys. Well, the important thing is that we can choose to invite God into our lives. And not only will he forgive us of our sins, but then he can help us make good choices. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a lot of questions. What are you doing here? What? I was passing by and I heard you over the fence. Oh, and about the flowers? Oh, well, don't worry about the flowers. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Great, but can we walk and talk? Because Vic's about to find the last house without us. What? Good luck. I searched everywhere. I can't believe I wasted a whole day on this. I'm calling Mom. Brandy, are you coming? One second. So, how does God like, actually help you make the right choice? Well, it, it takes some time really practicing listening to God. Uh, what you really need to do is read the Bible. You see, that's full of God's instructions on making wise choices. Do you think you can find it? It's getting late, but I can check. the final cash. Congratulations, you have earned an all-expense paid trip to Pirates Cove theme park. Scan the code to collect your prize. Whoa! You mean that's been behind this fence right here all this time? Guys, I don't think I need to keep this prize all to myself. This prize is probably big enough for us that we can all share it. Wait, really? The fun is finding it. Besides, this feels like something that Jesus would do. You know, this has been great, but I'm glad that I finally know how to make good choices. Okay, so we've been talking about faith. Now everybody has faith and you get to choose what you put your faith in. So what is another word that would help us to understand what faith is? Well, faith is confidence. So what things do you have confidence in? I'm sure you feel confident that your parents are gonna take care of you and that they're going to feed you, right? So that would be having faith in your parents. You probably have faith that the next breath that you take is gonna have oxygen in it so that you can live. And you probably have faith to believe that a chair can hold your weight so that when you sit in it, you don't have to worry about it falling apart and you falling to the floor. So today we have an object lesson kind of about what to put your faith in. So I have baking soda today and I have about a half a cup of it in either one of these. And then I have my jars here filled with liquid. So let's talk about what we can put our faith in. If we put our faith in ourselves, what would happen? So let's call this jar ourselves, us, me. If I put my faith in me, what will happen? So let me put the baking soda in here and see what happens. Mm. Well, not a whole lot. Kind of sinks to the bottom, a few bubbles, but nothing really spectacular. When we put faith in ourselves, we really are trusting in the knowledge that we have, but we don't really know everything, do we? And in the decisions that we make, I mean, we might make some good decisions, but honestly, we don't know everything. Now, what happens when we put our faith in God? Well, we'll call this one God, and we're gonna do the same thing, put baking soda in. Let's see what happens. Ooh, wow. <laughs> that is amazing. That was completely different than putting faith in ourselves. So I'm sure you're wondering, well, what was different and why did this one have a reaction and this one didn't? I'll let you in on a secret. This one was filled with water and this vase we filled with vinegar. So when you added the baking soda, there was a chemical reaction that caused it to bubble up. The whole purpose of the object lesson is to show you that putting your faith in an all-powerful, all-knowing God is unbeatable. What you wanna do 
is put everything into Jesus, into your faith in God. Because like I said, we know some things, we can do some things, we have talents, we have abilities, but really we're limited. But if we put all of our faith and confidence in God, it's an unbeatable match. So what I'd like to encourage you to do um, oh, I forgot. When we did VBS, do you remember we talked about what true confidence is? Confidence is seeing yourself the way that God does. Now, God considers you a treasure, and he wants the best for you and for your life. So trust him with your future. Put your faith in him, because quite honestly, the best treasure in your life is your relationship with God. Did you know that most of the time, pirates didn't bury their treasure. So we've been learning that pirates didn't always do the best things. Sometimes they stole things. They were thieves. But most of the time, they stole clothes or food items. But if they did ever steal something great like treasure or anything like we see on TV, most of the time, they didn't really get very far or get away with it where they could actually hide it. Most of the time, they would lose it before they could even do that. Well, I want to ask you, have you ever had something that you uh, valued so much, and, but you lost it or maybe it broke? For example, maybe you had a favorite uh, blanket or something when you were younger, and uh, maybe a do your dog or your animal ripped it and tore it up. Or maybe you had uh, your favorite shirt, maybe your favorite shoes, and you're eating spaghetti and you got something on it. Or maybe you stepped in a mud puddle with your favorite shoes. Maybe you had a video game or a toy and it got broken or somehow, right? Or you fell off the table and it just broke. We've all been there before. I know when I was a kid, you guys maybe not, maybe not remember these, but you know, now you have your video games, it saves, like you save your data or your progress on the device that does it for you. Well, back when I was a kid, we had this thing called a memory card, which you had to buy and it went into your game system um, and then that would, all your save data would go on that thing. Well, I had a game that I put a lot of hours into, a lot of investment into, um, and I remember this happened a few times, but the memory cards were not always the best, most reliable technology in the world. So sometimes all your saved data would just get deleted for some reason. And so I remember when I went to play my game, it was one of my favorite games at the time, and I saw that all my progress had been deleted. I was so upset. I remember for the entire day, probably the next few days, I would just, I was so sad. I would just be lying on the couch, just, I mean, honestly, just sulking in myself because I lost all my stuff. That was not necessarily a bit good thing that I did, but we've all been there before. We've lost something that was really valuable to us. Well, I want to look up a Bible verse where Jesus is talking about the things that we treasure, the things that we value. This Bible verse is from Matthew chapter 6. Verse 19 through 21. Grab your Bibles out. I want you guys to find it and read it with me. Pause the video if you need to. But let's, look, let's uh, read this together. So it says, Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for your tre yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I bet a lot of you have heard that Bible verse before. It's pretty popular. So when you lost that treasured item of yours, wherever it may be, how did it feel? Pretty bad, right? It felt awful. And when we lose these super precious items, it feels bad because we treasure these things. They're important to us. But as we saw in this Bible verse, what it's talking about is really all these items will eventually wear away. Everything will break down at some point. These items are not um, eternal. So maybe moths and vermin or rats are not our problem, but back then when Jesus was around, those would be a huge problem because moths and rats would bite the clothes and eat the, the, um, the cotton in the clothes. And if you only, they only had like maybe, you know, a couple outfits, that'd be a pretty big deal. And then their food, you know, the rats would get in their food and that wasn't good. All right, so let's go back to those items that we've lost or got destroyed. So maybe at the time it felt terrible, but what about right now? Does it still, does it still feel as bad? Is it still as important? Well, if it happened recently, maybe, but if it happened a long time ago like myself, probably not. I know now that those things were not as important as I was making it seem. I was treasuring it so much 
that it ruined like my whole life at the time. Well, God is telling us in this Bible verse that we shouldn't be putting our um, hearts all into those items that are not going to be around forever. And all these items, everything breaks down. You know your room, it doesn't constantly get cleaner, it constantly gets messier. So you have to clean it again, right? So the same is true for our items on this earth. Our, our basketballs, our toys, our video games, they're always wearing down. So God is telling us not to put our hope in these things, but to put our hope in eternal things. Put our hope in Jesus and the things that he gives us. We put our hope in God's word and the things that he says. We put our hope in his promises. We treasure uh, godly character, the things that he's constantly growing in us. We treasure um, fellowship with other believers. We treasure God's presence. These are the things that God wants us to treasure most of all. The best part is when we do treasure Jesus above everything else, this Bible verse is saying that uh, the things that make our earthly items wear away or uh, get broken over time, that's not going to affect um, Jesus. That's not going to affect our relationship with him. It's not going to affect that we can be with him forever in heaven. These things are eternal. And when we put our hope in these things, they will sustain us as well. So I want to pray. I want to pray for um, all you at home. And I want to pray for two groups of people. One... Maybe you've never had the opportunity to even have Jesus as your treasure. And so we want to pray for you that you will receive Jesus as your treasure. And what that means is you are giving your life to him. It's an exchange. So you're taking things that, uh, all the selfishness that we have, our sins, and we're asking God, we're giving them to him because he died for us on the cross, but we still have to give our lives over to him. We have to give him control of our lives and serve him. And so when we accept Jesus into our hearts, that's what we're doing. It really is um, giving ourselves over to him, and it's a transfer of who's in charge. So we want Jesus to do that. And then I want to pray for um, everybody. Maybe you've already accepted Jesus into your heart, but there's still things that you know that you're treasuring above him. So I want to pray um, for both those areas. So let's close our eyes and bow our heads. God, I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you that you are the most amazing treasure in the world, God. That there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than being with you. There's nothing better than your word. God, I, uh, I saw, I'm sorry when we do put things above you, God, when we treasure things as more important than you. But God, I pray uh, for all those who are watching, maybe for those who've never even accepted this treasure. And it's a free treasure, God, that you are giving to each and every one of us, to know you, to be close to you. But we have to give our hearts over to you, God. We have to give you control and let you to be Lord of our lives. God, uh, I pray that everyone watching, they'll repent of their sins, God. It means we uh, turn from the wrong ways of living and uh, pursue the righteous way of living, which is to live for you, God. We know we've all made mistakes, but we want to live for you. I thank you that you've forgiven us, God, that you died on the cross so that we could um, have that forgiveness. But I pray you would help us to treasure you above all things and to serve you. Help us to read your word. Help us to treasure um, all the words in your Bible, God, to memorize it and to study it. And that we would hold all those things as the most um, important things in our lives. And even for those who've already accepted you, God, it's so easy to want other things and to treasure other things. God, help us to see you as most important. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, do you guys remember what our big idea is for today? Our big idea is I can be wise by choosing God. This is such a great way to end this series. The idea that true wisdom comes from God and when we choose God, he helps us in every part of our life make wise choices. So we've had the same memory verse all month long. Our memory verse comes from Ephesians 5.15 and it says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Can you guys say it with me? Let's say it one more time together. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Ephesians 5.15. Well, this has been a great series. I've enjoyed being with you guys. This is not gonna work.
You guys didn't think I was gonna throw my real hair, did you? Well, we wanted to close out the series up here in the tower because it makes me feel big. And as you saw Miss Patty, she was really small down there. We're going into a new series talking about big and small and the fact that God cares about every part of our lives, the big things in our lives and the small things in our lives. And sometimes we think things are small, but God really sees them as big. And so I can't wait for this new series. I hope you guys join us. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe to these channels. And that way you can get all the videos that we are doing. We'll see you next week. Bye.